Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today, we are going to be working on forging pipe into a cupping pool. Thanks for watching. Okay everybody, for this project we're going to need a few things. We are going to need a piece of quarter inch by one inch flat stock. Whatever length that you like. I usually go for about four inches wide. This tool that I'm using, I'm going to be using it in the vise, so it'll be having that flat stock welded onto the bottom. I feel that the vise provides a much better support for this versus it being in the hardy hole of the anvil. Obviously, if you wanted to put it in the hardy hole of the anvil, then you would have to weld a steel plate to the bottom and then weld on a hardy shank to make that into a cupping tool that would go in the anvil. As you can see, this is just a scrap piece of pipe. It was cut off of a much larger piece of pipe. And we're just, I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece off, get it trimmed off, and then we will go to actually forging this rim here. This is our nicest rim, and it's the factory cut rim, so we know it's good and straight and clean. But I'm going to show you how to turn this pipe into a cupping tool to be making you know, anything that you need to forge a depression in, raise bowls, you name it. This is a great alternative to a swedge block. I, you can do this on pipe that's a lot larger than this. Um, in fact, I think I got one here. You can do stuff on pipe that big uh, if you wanted to take the time to do this. So you can very quickly see and this is just an end cut off of one of my power hammer builds. Um, you can very quickly see how this can create a very large depression that you can forge uh, stuff down into. So I'm going to tur turn this into a cupping tool for a swedge block. For a swedge block, I'll turn it. Okay, everyone, here we are. We got our two pieces prepped and ready for welding. As you saw in that video, I always clean off all my burrs off my material. This is generally a safe practice that you guys want to do. Um, whenever you're using a chop saw, angle grinder, doesn't matter, plasma cutter, always clean off your burrs, especially when it comes to a chop saw or a angle grinder cut off wheel they leave a pretty nasty burr on the material that burr is razor sharp and so if you come in there and you you know if you're messing around with this and you one moment of stupidity you just cut your finger not nearly off and they're very dangerous so dress off all your burrs always so this right here we got this done this is our quarter by one flat stock we get, went ahead and got that all prepped. As you can see, there's still a little burr on the inside, but that's going to flick off during the forging process. And I'll actually ream it out actually with a file after I'm done talking here. But we're going to get this set on top of here like so, and then we're going to get this welded up. We want the surfaces to be clean where this is welding. And right here, I always I already forgot what I need to do. I need to put bevels on here so this way we can get a good tack weld on both sides and good penetration of this welded into the piece. But that's essentially how that's going to form up. Pretty simple. We want to do this part first before we do the forging. One, this gives us a handle to hold on to versus trying to navigate the pipe. And two, we can lock it in the vise then and do the final shaping of the uh, of the pipe once we've turned it into this swedging tool. So, without further ado, we'll go ahead and put the bevels on this, and I'll get this all welded up, and then we will be at the forge and start rocking this puppy out.
Okay, everyone. Here we are at the vise. I've got this clamped in really nice and tight. I use copper jaws. I'll put a link in that in the description for the copper jaws video I did and at the end of this video. Uh, it's just a real pointed out some reasons why. Main reason, it helps things bite a little better and not move around so much in your steel jaws of your vise. So, I am a blacksmith that takes the route of least resistance. And what I mean by that is, is I do not get paid to do things traditionally. I get paid for the outcome of the product. So, when I make tooling, I take the path that is the quickest to get the tooling done to serve the purpose that I need it to do. And no huss and no fuss about it. I go, I, I just get it done as quick as I can. That way, I do not have to spend any extra effort or time on making tooling and therefore I can make more money and be able to support my family better, which is my ultimate goal. So I use a torch a lot in my shop. I use a big rosebud torch in my shop, have for quite a while, and it's what I prefer for this particular operation. So now you guys can take and use just a forge and heat this up, but what we're wanting is a localized heat on the rim of this pipe, because we're going to start rolling this out. The reason for that being is because if you do not, if you do not roll out the edge of this pipe, it'll leave little galls on the back of your work. And that's just not any good. So that's not what we're wanting. So all we want to do is get a nice heat on the edge of this pipe. Work the heat around. Because all the movement we want is just on the edge. When we go to pour things. nice and hot. Sorry if you guys can't hear me over the sound of the torch. I'll do my best to mitigate that to some degree. You want the entire edge hot before you go to hammering on it. That way it stretches equally around the piece.
lumpy spots. Go ahead and hammer those out.
Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, uh. All right. So, as you can see, I've got it pretty well cleaned up there. You could use a little refinement. There's some wonkiness to it. You can cold dress that. This is essentially what you're looking for. You want to roll these rims out, and then we'll go to cleaning it up. Once you get it good and rolled out, Get it all cleaned up. Now, if you don't have an angle grinder with a flat disc, it's a little more laborious, but you can clean this up with a file and just some sandpaper and get that nice and smooth. But that's what you're wanting to look for. And then look for the future video that I'll be posting. Where I'll take this, I've done another video on forging a saw blade bowl, but I'm going to forge this saw blade bowl on this cup just to demonstrate how it works. So that'll be in a future video. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a big thumbs down, as usual. And, uh, and I will make sure that I put all of the tools that I used in this video, the links to them so you can read more about them. And if you need to get you a set of tools, you can use the links down there to go get those. And that helps support the channel. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It'll all be in the description box. Thanks guys for watching. God bless you all. Have a great day.